All right. Well, as some of you guys noted at the end of class last time, we have reached a milestone. Do you remember that whenever, I think it was the first day or two, we were looking at, I was saying, okay, so this is going to be the book for the course. And we looked at the proof that's on the cover of the book. And everyone said, oh, man, what, did, what it looks like Greek to me. Well, look at this proof. It's a theorem that we just did. And I think we can understand it, right? Look, it's the, it's the theorem for all x range true, body p implies q equals the set of x range over uh, p is a subset of the, uh, of the set of x over q. And there's the proof. And you, we can do, we can. It still looks kind of Greek, but. But I mean, but I mean, it's, it's right. I think you, sh you should be able to understand every step of this proof now, right? Because we're, we're, this is what we're doing. So, huh? we've reached a milestone. Good for us. <laughs> we made it one mile. We made it one mile, milestone. Okay, and so I just am giving back the homeworks, and, and you, we, you have a, a kind of a lengthy uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven proofs today, right? And uh, so are there, before we go on, are there any questions about the homeworks? I have a question. Sure. Which one? On 11.48. that's... S intersection T equals the empty set equals for all X range true. X is an element of S implies X is not an element of T. All right. What's your question? I can only get it to be it implies the, I mean, I don't get the not. I can't get the you can't get the not here? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, as you got, yeah. Okay, so now uh, I, th I think what I would recommend on this one is to do 11.4 on the left-hand side, right? That's right. Yeah. So if you do uh, uh, so if you do 11.4 on the left-hand side, then um, that's where you get the for all, right? And then inside that, let me think, what would happen inside that? Inside that, you would have, you have x is an element at, uh, s intersection t. Yeah. Yeah. So you'd have an you'd have an x as an element of s intersection t. And you would also have an x as an element of the, of the empty set, x, right? Any, anything is an element of the empty set equals false. False, yeah. So then what do you do with false? Well, you have it, you have e equals false is not, not. No, it's not contradiction. It's definition of false. Yeah, here, that would be, uh, remember, not p, p, equals false, equals p not, not p. Not p. Yeah. Right, right, right. So that would be, yeah, yeah, the, the trick there is, shouldn't call it a trick. The technique there <laughs> is um, three point. No, no, no. Sorry. Fifteen. Three point fifteen. Yeah. P equals false. Three point one five. Equals not P. Right. So that's where the not comes. And then you also know this. Oh, here's here's another thing. Here's another thing. You know that. You know that not, like, I don't know, let's say V here. Here's another fact. You know that not V is an element of S equals V is not an element of S. This is a, here's another thing that you use. This is just by definition. This is the definition of what it means to be not to to be not an element. It's not, it is an element. Isn't there a parenthesis around the V element of S? Or is it, does it not matter? Well, we would have to go back. The question is, is there a parenthesis around here? And the, question, and the, a the answer is that it depends on what the precedence of equivalence is compared to, the, to a, a, an element of. And I think if you go back to that well, element, precedence. Element, not has a higher precedence than element of, except when you look at your trick, it like, Oh, you mean like around here? Yeah, around oh, yeah, yeah, maybe so. Because... Sure it makes, doesn't make a difference. Well, v, v is an element, so not... Well, I guess you could tell yeah. because of the types. It would be impossible for this to apply just to the V because of the type. But to make it absolutely clear, yeah. you could do that. Are you with me? Yeah. 
So, yeah, that's an interesting point. Well, technically, that's what technically, that's technically that what you're saying, not V, which is a type conflict. But then you could say, oh, well, because that's a type conflict, then it must apply to this. But maybe it's better to put the paren. Yeah. Don't get any confusion. <laughs> right. Like naming two different X's the same X. <laughs> okay. Anyway. Yeah, let's not. Yeah, uh, we've already beat that one to death. Okay, is that any questions? More questions? Yeah, question on 1114 about the X thing. On 11, uh, hold on, hold on, a question. Wait, wait, wait. Are we, are we going to beat that dead horse again? <laughs> oh, no, no. It's going to happen. Wait, wait, wait. 11.14? Can you just do size and then 11.7? Wait, wait, wait. I don't understand. What? I didn't assign 11.14. No, it's exercise 11.14. Oh, exercise 1114. What, what is, what is, prove what is the number? Exercise 11.14 is to prove what? The number of set of racks range P. Number. Set of racks. Oh, 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 oh. Set over X range P. P. Sum over x, range p, body 1. Uh, I was, was going to use 11, 12 size as the, on the left hand side. Yes, that, yes. Is that, because, and you're going to use. Do I need to change the dummy? Isn't that already a theorem? No, the theorem that we have is 11.12, which is what you have to use to get right. to it. Okay, so let's take a look at 11.12. Oops. So here's 11.12. So it's axiom size, and it says the, the number of elements says equals Is it okay to leave it that. at x, or would you rather we change the, well, change the dummy of that? If you need to do, change the dummy, then you, you well, should you know, change the dummy. Then yes, do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't think you need to. Then, then, then yes, do it. <laughs> That's a good philosophy. <laughs> okay, so you're starting with the, the, the left. You're starting with the left hand side, yeah, right? Yeah, so okay, so so you're doing number x p this equals. So we have to rewrite this in a form. Uh, we have to expand this out. To get this to be a set, right? Well, it is a set. Well, I mean, but we need to get it. They were using that form. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. So, so this equals by eleven point twelve. This equals by eleven point twelve, and then you'll have what you'll have is the right hand side of eleven point twelve. But instead of having s, you're going to have this. Is that fine? Well, <laughs> on the other hand, um, that's not fine. That's not fine. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, uh, I'm sorry. We're gonna ha we're getting back to the horse. <laughs> Beat the dead horse. No, 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 no. No, no. Those are two different X's. So what? We just label it Y and then yes. Change. Yes. 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 No, you can't call this. You can't call. You can't have two different variables have. You should not have two different variables have the same name in an expression. Can we just have x one, x two. Please. That's what subscripts are for, isn't it? Exactly. Or x prime, whatever. Of course, in calculus, x prime is the derivative of x with respect to time, but yeah. whatever. <laughs> <laughs> See, the thing is, even though you do that, like, I don't get why you can't just... Because they're two, they are two different x's. <laughs> They are two different x's. So you shouldn't call them the same thing. Okay. 
Maybe I did that. That's What what's that error called? Like same variable. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll I'll I I will think of some name for it's the error. <laughs> It's going to be, from now on, it's going to be called the Josh error. We have a couple of Josh errors. Wait, once you get, it's going to be like the sum of y range y is an element of that body, or like that set. This then, set, yeah. Then do you have to do a change of variable? Yeah, on this one. On you, the need, you need to do it on that. You no. do it on the quantification. Oh, well, actually, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Either way. Question then. When do you ever use 11.7? <laughs> when do with, you ever? With the two X's. You never will. You never will. What's the point of being because we're Because I'm, because it's in, that's the way it is in the text, in the things, and that's why I did an 11.7.1. So you would rather we just you always use eleven point seven. Exactly. Okay. I mean, you saw in the okay. proof yesterday that when the author used eleven point seven, he really was me. using eleven point seven point one. It made sense to me. All right. I know, but you see that he yes. did eleven. He did. He used our eleven point seven point one. Boy, this poor horse. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's in the grave. <laughs> We've beaten him to death so much. Anyway. <laughs> Even if you change it, how do you get the x back out and? Don't you have two? Don't you have a property of textual substitution? Yeah. Yeah. If you have, if you have p with x if you replaced by y, and then with and then y with replaced by x. by x. Yeah. <laughs> this has been a fun exercise. <laughs> we'll have to. That, that property of textual substitution only works if there weren't any y's in it. Correct. As a matter of fact, if I gave back the solutions, um, uh, yeah, let me see this solution. So I, I noticed, um, I noticed that, um, look, look, the, the proof of 11.7 .7 from last time that I'm handing back, I, I wrote up a solution for that. And look carefully at it. And, and this answers your question about, about how it doesn't occur. So notice in the proof of 11.7 that it says, um, we're, we're trying to prove that we're starting with x is an element of the set x over range r equals by 11.51 and we expand it out. And now when 8.21 is change of dummy, right? Now this change of dummy, even though 8.21 applies to uh, uh, quantification, we are applying it to the set. Right, so this is the set version of 8.21. And notice that what we're doing, when we change the variable, when we change the variable from x to y, we are at liberty to choose whatever y we want, whatever letter we want. And we, what we're going to do is, so we have, we, we, have, we have the liberty to choose, to choose a letter up for a variable that's not in R. That's our choice. We can do that because we can replace it with any variable that we want. So we choose to replace it with a variable that's not in R. Are you with me? So that establishes that not occurs y in r. And then when we get down here to where we have to do this uh, property of textual substitution, this property of textual substitution only works. You know, if everywhere there's an r, you replace, everywhere in r there, there's an x, you replace it with y, and then after that, everywhere there's a y, you replace that with x, you get r, but not all, I mean, but only if the R did not uh, contain the Y to start with. Because if it did, you would be changing one of the Y's, the original Y's, back to X that you, you know. And, and it, wouldn't be, it wouldn't be equal. But we had the, uh, we had the ability to, to, to select which Y we chose up here. And that's how we can justify the property of text, textual substitution down there. Is everybody clear? I went, does everybody see that explanation here? It's uh, th yeah. This is this is this is this is a detail, but it's an important detail because we have to conceptually understand that these are expressions with variables in them, and we have to be careful that we don't get get them mixed up. You know that we do things legally. Yeah. 
Okay. More questions about the homework? We've got discussions going on here. You know, we might want to clip some of this dead time from the video. Did you cut out arguments for <laughs> No, keep the arguments there for posterity. <laughs> Are you going to watch our, oh, that's a good idea. You can go uh, watch, our, watch our, dis our animated discussion. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. <laughs> okay, any more questions about the homework? So we did 11.45, 46, 48. Did you, were you able to use the meta theorem on any of them? Yep, 11.50. Yeah, 11.50 is a good one for the meta theorem, huh? But you have to, in order, in order to use the meta theorem to prove 11.50, let's see 11.50. Yeah, this meta theorem. And here, 11.50 is s minus t is a subset of s. Well, you can't use the meta theorem with minus right away. So what do you do? You go back to the. Yeah, you go back to the definition. Oh, yeah, 11.49. And then you can use the meta theorem. So then you have to stop right there. And what do you have to say? By blah blah blah. Blah, 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 is, is a valid, if and only if, blah, 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 is valid, and then you do the, yeah. So why do we have to write out the entire meta theorem? You don't write, you are not writing out the meta theorem, you are. You're writing out the meta theorem with this expression. Exactly, that's what you're doing, because you are, because you are showing how that applies to this situation. Fine. <laughs> uh. Okay, and then uh, are we all okay? Eleven fifty-seven. We were to have to prove eleven fifty-seven anti-symmetry. Eleven fifty-eight reflexivity. There's actually a really clever proof for reflexivity that most people don't. You can pull a rabbit out of a hat and do it in like three steps, but most people don't see it. So. No, no, no. You can't use the meta theorem. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe you can. So S and try the S to make the range of body for both. I guess you can. I didn't think about that. Is, yeah, and is that a, is that a theorem? Is that a theorem? It should be. Where is it? Oh yeah. Son of a gun. <laughs> that's even that's even better than the one in the solutions manual. Okay. Any more questions? Should we go on? All right. Um, Now, watch this, you guys. Watch this. You're not going to believe this. I don't believe it. Probably <laughs> 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 Yeah, probably not. <laughs> probably get an argument out of you on this one, too. <laughs> it's a possibility. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, quantification. Now check this out, you guys. Now what is this operation? Union. Okay, union is a binary operator, right? Infix? Yeah, infix. Because it's SU, where do we have some unions here? No. Well, yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's not. Okay, so, so union is a binary operator. Now, here's my question. Is it symmetric? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to say 
<laughs> symmetric? Is it symmetric? How do we? Yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, it is symmetric. And why is that? Because T because S F union T, T equals, equals T, union T union S. Are you with me? Yeah. It is symmetric. Is it associative? I don't think so. Uh, yes. But it could be. I could be wrong. Yeah. Yeah. In other words, if you take if you take. No, it's not. If you take, oh, you think it's not? If you take S union T union U, does that equal, if you take S union T first and then union that with U? Is that? It's also item potent. I guess. Yeah, okay. It is. I think this is a theorem, right? Does somebody have a theorem number for us? 27, what's this one? 11? 26. 26, 26. Oh, and what about, and what about identity? Does it have an identity? Yeah, false. Yes. Yeah, false. 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 I see what you said. Wait, wait, does S union... Everything that S has in common with the universe yeah. would give you S. Yeah. Just reading the identity of... That's what the identity of the equation sheet. Yeah. 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 Is that right? Is that what it takes to, to be an identity? Yes. Uh, yeah, because the identity yeah. for multiplication <laughs> is X times 1 equals X, right? So S union the empty, empty set. set. What is union? Okay, here's the union. <laughs> union is like marriage. <laughs> it's this. You add all of them together. It's in order to be, because union is or. Intersection is and, yeah. union is or. So an element is in the union if it is in this or this. Okay. Or both. Or both, because our, our or is inclusive or. Because we are accepting of all. Our, because we are so accepting of all. Yeah. <laughs> all are welcome in our big tent, in our big formal methods tent. Okay, so it has an identity. Wait a minute. If it's symmetric and associative and has an identity, it. it must be a what? Abelian monoid. Absolutely. Word. It must be an abelian monoid. Is it item potent? Yep. Yeah, but that doesn't, it doesn't have to be, uh, that's irrelevant. It is item potent, but that's irrelevant. So that means you can use all the universal And that means that you can quantify over it. Do you realize what this means? This means you can do this. Look, now let's take a look. At 11 point, uh, there's, uh, at 11 point 70, oh, I don't have it on my, uh, don't have it on my slides. Hmm. 11 point 74, okay, so, we don't have it either. you can quantify. I don't want to do this. Well, we won't do it a whole lot, but. 11.74 in the book has, has, has an expression like this. You can say parentheses and you can say the union, all right, the union over X, you know, range R, body E. Now notice that this is not a set. Well, I take that back. Um, the type, what is, what, is, what, is the, what, is, what is the type of a quantified expression? The type of the quantified expression is the type of, of the body. And the type of the body is a set. But we don't write this as a set. This is a quantification over union. It's a bunch of set expressions. Are you with me? And not only that, but you understand the intersection would be the same way, right? So it'd be yeah. S intersection T equals T intersection. And it, this, and that, but what is, what is it, does the inter, what's the intersection? Universe. Yes. Be the universe. Is that just for the union and intersection? No other ones? Well, those are the only binary ones that we've done dealt with with sets, right? The other thing was complement. Well, subset. That's binary. Subset. Oh, sub, yeah, but see, a subset is not symmetric. In other words, A is a subset of B does not equal B is a subset of A. So, 
Oh, that's a good, that, actually, that's a good observation, huh? Why subset, why you, you can't take the, the quantification of, with the subset operator. Okay, but you can do it with this one, 11.75. You can, you can say the intersection over x, range r, body e. And every once, you'll, you see this every once in a while in math. This, this crops up occasionally in, in, in math, you know. So, oh, union over x, you know. But you can do it because it's a Boolean monoid. Yeah. Yeah, well you know how you know how in, in Yeah, yeah, you know you know how you know how in sigma how they do sigma from i equals you know 1 to n something like that. Well, they they'll do the union, you know, i equals 1 to you know, they'll they'll do it use the same notation like this. But it's they they're using this they they are using this this fact and the reason you can do it is because it's a, it's an abelian mon monoid. Okay, now um, one other, another concept is uh, the concept of a partition. What? What was your question? You had, you had when you did the quantification for union, you did union dot x. Was that just a? No, no, no. Type it was a t yeah. Okay. Union over x. All right. Yeah. <laughs> there might have been a little bug there on the board that you mistook for a dot. <laughs> okay, so let's say now, now, now let's let's check this out. Let's let's do let's do eleven. 11.76, the idea of a partition. 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 This is going to crop up next. We're going to come back to this. This is our first previews of coming attractions. Now, and let's take a look at what, and this is an axiom. This is the definition of a partition, right? So, and what it says is that set S partitions T if two things hold, all right? So set S partitions T if two things hold. Number one, the sets in S are pairwise disjoint. Um. What the heck does that mean? Hello. <laughs> and part two, the union of the sets in S is T. All right. And then he says that is if we have all of this stuff. Whoa. Now before we look at all of this stuff, let me give you an example so that we so we'll be equipped to understand what this means. S is a set of sets. Then? No, 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 it's not. It is. Uh, oh, wait. I'm sorry. It is. No. Yes, it is. Uh, yeah, I take that back. It is. Okay. Now let's let's suppose that the universe is this. Let's suppose that the universe is A, B, C, D, E, F. Well, it, it depends on the context. I mean, you, you define the universe to, it depends on the type. Okay. So when I define this, I'm really defining a type, right? Because the type is a set of all of the other, right? So let's just, for this example, this is a finite, okay, universe. So let's, so this, let's say this is the universe of, of all the things. Now, so let me, I'll do an example, let me give an example. Okay, let me give several examples. First example I'll give is, we'll give is this. Let's suppose, and it says S partitions T. And then it says the sets in S are pairwise disjoint. What's pairwise disjoint? Yeah, hold on. Yeah, let me. Uh, and, and so let's do, let's, let's, let's do this. Let's say that S is, is this following set of sets. Let's say that it's the set A, D, F, and also the set. Um, also the set B, C, D, and also the set F. Uh, actually, let's, let's have it be, for this example, let's have it be F, E. Okay, hold on. All right, so, okay, now, now, my question is, is this, is this, is this S a partition, is it a partition of, um, yeah, does it partition the universe? Actually, actually, actually what we should say, let's, let's, yeah, let, I think we should call this T, sorry for that. Okay. Does this partition T? Does this partition T? So the, here's the question. Is, or it, it does. Okay, so does S 
partition does S partition T? And the answer is, anyone want to hazard a guess? Yes. The answer yes. is no. Well, it satisfies the second bit. Though. Yeah, okay. Now, the reason why it doesn't satisfy it is, is it's true that the union of the sets in S is T. So 2 is true. 2 is true. Because if you take the union of this set and this set and this set, you get T. Okay? But 1 is not. Now, why is 1 not true? Because it's not a pairwise. Because they're not pairwise disjoint. So now what does it mean to be pairwise disjoint? Now look, you see what we have is we have three elements in S. Now each element is itself a set, but we have three elements in S, right? So how many pairs do we have? We have this pair, and this pair, and this pair. Are you with me? Is everybody with me on pairs, right? Okay. Oh, so, so it's pairwise, okay? And what disjoint means is, disjoint means they have nothing in common. So for, in, order for, in, in order for one to be true, so let's write. It would have to be A, B, and then C, D, and In order for one to be true, in order for one to be true, you must have the following. Must have, you must have A, D, F intersection B, C, D equaling the empty set. And you would have to have A, D, F intersection uh, F, E being the empty set. And you would have to have B, C, D intersection F, E. F, E being the empty set. You would have to have that. But the problem is, you, you, you'd have to have all three of these, right? Now, this is not true. No. Is this true? No. Is this well, true? Yes. Yeah. yes. All the sets are mutually exclusive of each other. Yeah. The, it, pairwise disjoint is the way you say it. Pair, pairwise disjoint. So, well, well, it means the intersection is the to be disjoint. To be to be disjoint, it means that it means nothing in common, and to have nothing in common, it means that the intersection is the empty set. Okay. Are you with me? Yeah. Okay. And so, all three of these would have to be the case. Okay. But it, but that's not the case. Now, look, you guys. Before we take a look at this hairy expression, um, why is it called partition? Oh, here's a really good example. This room has a lot of chairs in it, right? Now, you, have you ever been to like uh, an office, you know, like, like an office where they have cubicles and they have, and what are those things? They're called partitions. Now, you think about it. Suppose we were able to come in here and put a big partition like right down here and another partition right down there. And you, well, I mean, let's forget the tables. Let's just talk about the chairs. Oh. Okay, so you see what I'm saying? So, so if, if, if you had these partitions, all, all that you, if you take the intersection oh, of, all, okay. of, all, of each area in the office, the intersection of all the chair, uh, chairs, you get all the chairs. Yeah. But also, there's one chair can't be in, in two yeah. different partitions because so, that's what a partition. So that's why it's called so a partition. This is, is all the parts of T. Well, yeah, so n number one, S. Contains all the parts of T, uh, and all the parts of S are completely different from each other. Yes. Okay, that makes sense. Yes, so and that's why it's called a partition. It's because it's, it's, it's like if you, it's divide, yeah, it's like, it's like you, you put this partition down here, and this chair, you know, when you put these partitions down, a chair can only be in one partition. You know, you can't, you see what I mean? So, so that's what. The e wasn't in the last part of this set of S, would the second part of it not? If E wasn't here, e no, then the that. union would not be all of T. You need to get right, rid so of the, the second F. part would be wrong, right? Yeah. yeah. You need to get rid of the F. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how would you, uh, maybe, shall we do a partition? F and D. Let's do T, B, here, let's, let's do a partition. A, B, C, D, E, yeah, here, let's, let's do, let's do, let's let T equal A, B, C, D, E, F, 
And then let's let S be the set of sets, maybe A, C, D, or A. Let's go AD. Okay, yeah, let's go AD. I, I like your idea. Let's go A, D, and uh, what? Well, yeah, B, E, and then F, maybe, right? C, oh, C, F. Let's go, let's go, let's go B, E, C, A, B, B, C, E, and then F, F yeah. right? So now S does partition T in this case. Yeah, so here's, an ex so here's another example. All right? Does everybody see? Now, we don't have any, this, this is just a definition that, and we're not having any proofs based on this, but next semester we will. Okay, this is going to be important in discrete structures next semester. We're going to use, well, well actually we are, but this is defining what a partition, we're going to use this definition of partition next semester and we're going to, there are going to be some theorems that are based on it. And so now, with that in mind, can you understand this formal methods uh, for description? For all u and v, okay, where u is an s and v is an s, and u is not v. In other words, for all, for all, you know, any, 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 any pair of this, not a and a, but any pair, a, b, a, c, a, d, a, e, f, b, you know, for any, are you with me? For any pair, but yeah, never the same. Okay, so in that range, what does it say? Oh, wait, 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 wait. wait you yeah, yeah, hold it, hold it, yeah, yeah. I, 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 was, I, I, I said something wrong there. I was, I was doing U and V being A, B, C, D. I shouldn't have done that. U and V, it should have been this set, this set, this set, this set. Not the same. Are you right. with me? Yeah, yeah. Rather yeah. than doing like for all over variable, you're doing for all over, all over sets. sets. Because this is a set of sets. So the lowercase u and the lowercase v are these sets? Are these sets? Wait, I got a question. Can you, you know, like if, like, like, for example, this one, for example, this one would be u, and this one could be like v. Yeah. Are you with me? Okay. I got a question. Then. For all, can you do a for all of an expression? No. These have to be variables. No, I mean not in this particular case. Well, because no. beyond variables, now, they no, no, because be, no, no. These are called dummy variables. They're not called dummy expressions. They well, are they dummy variables. Yeah, they are sets. So they're this variable represents a set. This, this is a variable of type set. set. No. This variable is a set. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but these are really good questions. Well, no. Okay, okay. So, so, so it's, it says for all uv, u is an element set and v is an element of s, u is an element of s and v is an element of s, and they're different as long as they're different. Their intersection has to be the empty set. So for all pairs, that's the pairwise disjoint. And what does this say? Oh, we're using our quantification, quantification over union. Oh, I lied when I said we weren't going to use it. We're using it right here. Are you with me? And the, the union over u. Just like saying the sum over x, it's the union over u. So the union over u, u is an element of s of u equals t. So they all have to union up to be. All right, all right. Are we good? Wait, why is there not union like union B? Because we're not doing pairs. That is not a pairwise uh, uh, characteristic. Are you with me? It's the union of the individual ones it has to equal the set T. Well, so this U is a different U than the other U? Well, it hold, this is this you is this used bound or free? It's bound. It's bound to this. Yeah. So it could be. So I mean, it's it's different. I mean, it's calling the same thing, but it, but here is this you bound or free? It's bound. So we could have called this we could have called this x and y, and this could have been x blah blah. Well, the different u's and the different quantification. Well, but I mean, it's it's local. This u and these u's and v's are local to this. You can call them whatever they are. They're dummy variables. Are you with me? <laughs> so if I it, so here if I say is if if we say is this you the same as this you? No. No. 
because this U is bound to this U, whereas so this U is bound to this U. For us inside a, a whole quantification to have no U's that are different from each other. They're all the same U. Yes. Yeah, yeah. All of these U's inside this quantification are are the same as this U. <laughs> Man, that horse is so dead. <laughs> uh, this is good. All right, now just one more thing, uh, and um, actually. We're going to start mathematical induction. I'm not sure if I'm going to have time to do an example or not. Probably. Yeah, you're going to have a you're going to have an extra. Okay, I'll tell you right now what's going to happen is you have an assignment for Monday that you will need to have. Um, you'll have to do it after I give you the material on Monday. <laughs> so maybe, I, it'll, but it'll be easy enough. It'll be easy enough for us to do in class. It'll, no, no, no. It'll be easy enough to do in class. So I'll give you the material at the beginning of the class, and then well, I'll give you some time to do the homework problem. All right. And that's going to be the mathematical induction problem. All right, now, but so in closing, <clears throat> bags. <laughs> bags. Now, bags, bags are um, not very common. They're not, they are not very common. And we're not going to do. It's actually a technical. It, oh, it's a, it's a very, it, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, they're, they're called bags. It's a technical term. And they come up every once in a while, especially in computer science. I doubt if you'll ever see this in math. But they are, it, it, it is an important concept in computing when you have to deal with uh, set collections of values where duplicates are allowed. It oh, yes, it did in Prolog. So in Prolog, yeah, 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 we did do bags in Prolog, yeah. Where do you remember with sets? Here, you remember with sets? We had this. Uh, I think we might have proved this one. Didn't we have? Didn't we have like this? The set B B equals the set B. So what that? So what this is saying is what this is saying is that duplicates are not allowed because I mean if you if you enumerate this twice in an enumeration. It's the same as this. So, so, so with sets, duplicates are not allowed. Are, are you with bags. me? So are arrays bags or sets? No, arrays are neither. Arrays, so uh, array, each, each element in an array is a separate variable. So bags, it's like a bag of five mar blue marbles and a bag of five red marbles. And when you take one out, they're not arrays. Well, I mean, if you take one blue one out, then there's one less blue one. But, but it's like ha having a bag of, of marbles with, um, yeah. and, and you can have, yeah. Yeah, well, only here's the thing. Look at here. So bags are the same as sets, but duplicates are allowed. And look at the notation. The notation is the set notation, but with a little bar. Yeah, exactly. Are you with me? So that's what, that's what makes it a bag instead of a set. And what we're saying here is that the bag over x range negative 2 less than or equal to x less than 2 of x squared uh, okay. is, I don't know. It's, it's a definition. It's a definition. You can't argue with definitions. It's a bag of marbles. Yeah, it's like a bag of marbles. Actually, you're right. It is like a bag of marbles. Just like the partition is like a partition. office partition. Okay. So, uh, and th those are the those are four one zero one four. Now, if you if you did the set over x, negative two less than or equal to x less than two of x squared, that would also be four one zero one four. But we know that four one zero one four equals four one zero. Set four one zero. Probably. Okay, are you with me on this? So that's what a bag is. Now, if, here's a bunch of axioms, okay? They got axiom membership, axiom size, axiom number of occurrences. Oh, here, look at 11.81, axiom number of occurrences. Check it out. It's, it's the number of, blah, blah, blah. It's the, it's the sum over x, range r, and v equals e of 1. So you, you duplicates are allowed. Uh, we got bag equality. We have <laughs> sub bag. <laughs> we got we got proper <laughs> sub bags. Proper sub -bags. Okay. We're not so, these, huh? nah. I'm just showing this to you just for fun. Oh, 
<laughs> and an axiom union, intersection, bag difference, you know, bag intersection, bag difference, B union, you know. So there's lots of properties about bags, and they're, di they're different from sets. And I just wanted to, because this does come up. I mean, we will, like um, the cameraman said, in, in the, when we do prologue, we actually, we actually deal with the bag bags. But you see, it's, it's a pract it has a practical application because sometimes you have collections of the same item over and over again, you know, duplicates. So anyway, that's the story about bags. Okay, so to recap then, the one homework assignment that is about mathematical induction, I'll show you how to do that at the beginning of class next time. Is it parallel mathematical induction? Hmm? Is it just math math mathematical induction? Is it just mathematical induction? I, I'm going to show you how to do a mathematical induction proof. Why is it worth even looking at the homework? Oh, well, if you would like. There's stuff that we can do yet. Well, if you can read the book without having me lecture on it and understand the book, then you can do it. That means I can learn how to read this book. The book has no examples of that. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, have a great weekend. See you on Monday. <laughs>